Dear travelers and welcome. Today we're looking at the famed Fuji X100 Classic. This was the start of a new line that has cult status and continues down to today with the X100V as of 2021. There's definitely good reason that this camera line has taken off and we're going to see how it all started. I'd like to start off by saying how amazing is the packaging? The box it comes in feels like it's for a high class watch and once you open the box you're greeted with a satin lined enclosure that houses the exquisite camera. So let's do some history. The highly anticipated Fuji X100 was announced at Photokina back in 2010. Ah, 2010. And it basically stole the show with its hybrid viewfinder and its APS-C sensor with EXR processing. A quick overview of the specs are the following. 12 megapixel, fixed Fujinon 35mm equivalent f2 prime lens with EBC coating, magnesium alloy body, made in Japan, 2.8 inch fixed rear LCD screen, hot shoe and built in flash, ISO ranging from 200 to 12,800, shoots JPEG and RAW, and a built-in ND filter. The X100 uses a distinctly traditional control layout, clearly inspired by fully mechanical compacts from around the 1960s and 70s, with top-plated dials from shutter speeds and exposure compensation, plus aperture and manual focus rings around the lens barrel. It really makes using this camera an absolute treat. There's an excitement that you get when you have this camera in your hand. It cries out to you to take photos with it, and this results in more opportunities taken, which results in more photos made. Just going to dive into a little rant. You may have noticed that this is a relatively new camera compared to my recent videos where I was looking into older CCD cameras, and there's a reason for this. I love old CCD cameras, and they're definitely capable in taking great images. However, in the words of Lensvana, this camera will absolutely be ignored by bystanders. Okay, no one's gonna take you seriously. Even pickpockets will probably take pity on you, right? It has no resale value. Uh, people might think you're either really confused or like a lost time traveler. No one is going to take you seriously. And, you and I agree with everything he said. I know he was talking about the S100, but it does apply to a lot of these old cameras. It's kind of true. A middle-aged guy pulling out a chonky Canon G2 out of your coat pocket to take a photo of a basketball ring can look a little odd. And normally I wouldn't mind. But when I'm with my family or friends, I don't want to be flying my camera nerd flag so high. And that makes me realize that I'd like to thank all those people in my life that allow me to bring bags of cameras everywhere I go and take extra time to line up shots or spontaneously pull over the car to possibly take a shot that may or may not work. This camera life is quite an obsession. So anyway, the point I'm making is that the X100 solves some of that. If I'm out with family and friends and I pull out the X100, it doesn't have this camera nerd vibe to it. It's stylish and non-threatening. I even like to hand the camera over to my wife and take photos of her taking photos. <laughs> but that's probably a topic for another video. So watching other people's reviews of this camera is quite funny. The common gripes is that it has a slow autofocus and a clumsy menu system and the EVF has bad resolution and speed. I find it funny because the autofocus is fine and if you need it to be quicker then you just need to adopt a zone focusing method. The menu is fine, just set and forget. And yeah, I would never use the EVF because it has a truly stunning OVF or rangefinder patch, I don't know, what, what do you call this thing? But it's amazing. The camera is honestly faultless in my opinion. Oh, and did I mention that they are now relatively cheap? People are practically throwing them away as outdated tech. All the more for us, yeah? Even the X100S is getting very cheap on the second-hand market. But why might you choose the X100 Classic over the X100S? Well, the first model was loaded with a Bayer sensor at 12 megapixels. I really like this combo. The colors are really nice, and I don't like going higher than 12 megapixels. The Bayer sensor was designed in 1976 by Bryce Bayer, and according to Wikipedia, it incorporates a BGGR that represents for blue, green, green, red pattern sensor. This is said to follow the natural design of the human eye in that the human eye uses M and L cones during the day which are most sensitive to green light. What's a cone cell? 
well, mate? Good question. Here it is. They're photoreceptors in our eyes. And if you look at the graph to the right, you'll see the M and L cones that are close to the greens. Anyway, so yeah, Fuji later brought out the X-Trans sensor that was slightly different and removed the anti anti-analyzing, anti-analyze, anti anti-analyzing anti filter. Huh. This was able to make a sharper image. But that's not why I shoot. I don't care how sharp the image is. It's the colors and tones that I personally enjoy. So yeah, I'm very happy with the X100 Classic. Well, that's been a lot of talking, so I don't think we'll have time to show any photos with this camera today. Yeah, nah, just JKs, eh? Just JKs? Ja, 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 ja.